My name is Arvind Babu. I am working as a lecturer in information technology, computer science and engineering in DD Anamal University. Uh, in this session, I am going to discuss you about the fundamental aspects of e-commerce. In this subject, first of all, we are going to see some of the basic introduction about e-commerce, the definition of e-commerce, and we are going to compare it electronic commerce or e-business with the traditional business. Then we are going to see the framework of e-commerce. What are all the various uh, building features we are going to be making use in this modern business methodology? First, we are going to see the introduction about e-commerce. E-commerce is a modern business methodology that addresses the needs of organization, merchants and consumers to cut cost while improving the quality of goods and service and increasing the speed of service delivery. It also supplies the use of computer networks to search and retrieve information and increasing and it can be used for or it supports human and corporate decision making. More commonly e-commerce it may be used for re-engineering the particular business operations or business films or how to make the particular products or how we are going to compete with any other uh, manufacturers. For this we are going to see some of the broad goals of re-engineering and e-commerce. It can be categorized into four things. First one, it reduces cost, lower product cycle time, it uh, customer service and the last one, it improves service delivery. So these are all the four broad categories for re-engineering a business organization or a business firms. On we are going to see the definition about the e-commerce. As I already told, e-commerce is do not have any difference between e-business. When you are going to see e-business, it is nothing but it is a buying and selling. After buying and selling the product, we are going to make a relationship between the manufacturers and the customers. And that kind of relationship, we can call it as an, a business relationship. Whereas an e-commerce is nothing but is buying and selling of the products. So that is why e-commerce is one of the aspects of e-business like e-franchising, e-gambling or e-learning. In more precise, the definition of about e-commerce is it is a secure, flexible, integrated approach for delivering integrated business process. We are going to combine the process and the system as a core and we are going to making use for this particular thing with the, with the help of internet technique. So that is why we can call it as a secure, flexible and integrated approach to deliver differentiated business values which are going to combine the process and the system. The next we are going to see the comparison between traditional business and e-business. How far we are going to compare how far an electronic business is being advanced is having an edge over a traditional business. First of all we are going to mainly consider it with it is having a security in the electronic business it is a more secure and the data is being transferred or the data processed from manufacturer to customer or customers to manufacturer is, is being in a privatized. Say for example, the data is being only known to the manufacturer and the customer with the help of the secret key or public key cryptography. Only the code is known to manufacturer and the customer. And second one, it is more flexible than the traditional way of business. How this is it flexible? Say for example, when you are going to buy a product, traditional way of business, we have to spend, on, spend time to buy the product or to find out which particular organization or company is selling the product. So this is a time consuming. We have to allot time and find out where the product is being available with which particular company or manufacturer. Whereas in electronic business, we can simply sit in our home and to find out the products, what are all the companies they are offering the products. There is no time limit for doing this sort of business. So for example, anytime, anywhere we are doing this sort of business. So that is why this is flexible and more efficient than the traditional way of business. Say for example, 24 hours a day, 7 days in a week or 365 days, 
in a year. There is no time limit for doing this sort of business. And second one, this is more secure and this is uh, more efficient than the traditional way of business. Efficient in the sense means, say for example, the customer's response may be in faster comparative to the traditional business. If suppose if the product may not suit to their needs, we can immediately send our response to the manufacturers. And it reduces the costs, the electronic business is reduces the cost comparative to the way in which we are doing in the traditional business. How we are going to reduce the cost? Say for example, in the traditional business, once we are going to get the product, this comes in in various levels or variate intermediate levels. For, for example, from manufacturer to wholesaler, a wholesaler to a retailer, a retailer to the consumer. So it is having a various levels of transaction. So that is why the information is open to all. There is no security in this sort of business. Whereas in electronic business, we can straight away contact the customer or the customer contacts the manufacturer. So that is why the cost reduces and it gives more efficiency and the response is being faster comparative to the traditional business. So these are all some of the fundamental uh, differences between electronic commerce and a traditional way of business. The next we are going to see the reasons for going online. What are all the basic reasons for using this sort of modern business methodology? So that is why we can call it as the reasons for going online. First we are going to find it is having a seven or a eight important factors for using this sort of modern business methodology. The first one is it expands the market reach. By making use of this modern business methodology, it expands the market reach. How it expands the market reach? If suppose if anyone, if uh, today, nowadays, even the small, small companies, they are using this sort of business methodology. For example, the, by, by making use of this modern business methodology, we can expand our market reach from a local level to a regional level, a regional level to a, a national level, a national to an international level. That is why our product is being promoted or, or this is being used or this is being customized by number of users. Second one, visibility. Visibility is nothing but our product is being known or our product is reached to the single end users. There is no level, it is level of uh, intermediate. Say for example, this can be available to any sort of people. Uh, the product is being reached to each and individual persons. That is why we can call it as a visibility. Third one is new services. By making use of this modern business methodology, we can offer new services to the consumers. Or how we are going to making use of this uh, modern business methodology to attract more number of users for using our products by introducing new services. Say for example, uh, by giving loans or by giving some offers of buying the products, all those things. And the fourth one is responsiveness. Responsiveness in the sense means it gives both the response to the partners as well as the consumers or the customers using the particular products. And the next one is it reduces the cost. Definitely we are going to compare with the traditional business, it reduces cost and faster response, faster customer's response or we can simply call it as a customer service delivery. So these are all some of the reasons for going online. Next we are going to see the generalized framework of e-commerce. As far as this framework of e-commerce concerned, it can be categorized into three levels or three pillar diagram. We can, we can see in a diagram, we can call it as a three pillar or a three, it is a pyramid diagram. In the first level, what are all the various electronic commerce applications? Generally people think electronic commerce is only used for buying and selling of the products. Not only for buying and selling, it can be used for finding a jobs or it can be used for online marketing, online advertising, stocks and uh, malls, all those things. So what sort of application, the electronic commerce is being used for which particular application. So that is your top level or we can call this as a one first pillar. And second, what are all the various infrastructures we are going to use in this type of modern business methodology. Say for example, the first one, the people. People in the sense means, say for example, the buyer and the seller. Second one, what are all the various public policy issues which you are going to use in this modern business methodology? Public policy issues in the sense means taxes, legal issues and privacy issues. So if suppose a customer wants to send a information to the manufacturer, in the customer point of view, they have some hesitation. Say for example, our product is 
is being message is being secured one or not. So that is why we are going to make it as a privacy or it is a privacy as a security issues. And second one when you are going to contact all those things we are going to make use of this public policy issues. Who is going to make a linkage between your manufacturer and the customer? Between those we are having lot of things say for example the intermediate service is the one they are going to render the service and send into the corresponding customer's point of view. The information is being transferred. Third one is uh, what are all the technical standards we are going to make use in this type of business methodology? What type of protocol or networks we are going to making use? And fourth one what are all the services network services we are going to use? So, this we can call it as a second level or we can call it as a, a second uh, pillar. As far as in the next level that is our bottom level with concern we can call it as a management level for what sort of a service or infrastructure the methodology is being used. It is being categorized into five different types one is called common business infrastructure, second one messaging and information publishing infrastructure, third one network publishing infrastructure and the fourth one is multimedia context application and the fifth one is interfacing. So, these are all some of the management interface services which are going to making use this modern business methodology. So, in this way we are going to categorize into uh, three levels. Next we are going to discuss about the impacts of e-commerce. So, by making use of this modern business methodology how the, uh, the organization is being transformed. They are going to change the level or they are going to increase the level from one region to another region. So, that is why we are going to call it as the impacts of e-commerce. So, it is being categorized into three things. First, we are going to see the first impact that is nothing but it improves direct marketing. Direct marketing in the sense means under the in this we are having a subcategory one is called product promotion. As I already told it can be mainly used for strengthening the business relationship as well as it uses a, it introduces a new services. So, that is why the product is being promoted uh, from one level to another level. That too our product is being is having an information rich it is being uh, find out by all sort of peoples. The product is being promoted to the various levels in the region. Second one it can be mainly used for direct saving that is the customer directly contacts into the manufacturer that is why it reduces the cost not only the cost it also increases the efficiency. In this way we are going to save the cost direct saving. It improves direct uh, under this category it improves the direct marketing we can see it can be used for product promotion, new sales channel, new services and uh, one more thing it reduces the cycle time of the product. The product is being sent from manufacturer to customer how that is how many levels it can be transferred. So, that is why we are going to reduce the cycle time of reaching the product to the end users. Similarly, as far as in the consumer side it, it is having suppose the consumer wants to tell the feedback or the uh, grievances to the manufacturers it can be easily done with the modern business methodology. And another thing brand or corporate image is one of the most important category under this direct marketing. If suppose if any of the company may be use that brand or corporate image of selling the product. If suppose nowadays even the small small companies they are using this sort of modern business methodology to compete with the multinational companies. So, that is why it can be mainly used for promoting the business not only it, it can be used offers a new services it can be used for the product promotion and reduces the cycle time to reach the consumer or the consumers point of view to reach the manufacturers. As far as the impact of e-commerce concern the second category is it transforms the organization. Under this how we are going to transform the technology or the organizational learning. Say for example, when you are going to uh, send an information from the manufacturer to a consumer the manufacturer is, is having a system that is a much more configuration is having higher configuration system whereas, the consumer side customer side is having a less configuration system. So, that is why we are going to making use of this technological standards what sort of network or protocols is being used for sending and receiving the information from the consumer point of view or the manufacturer point of view. So, that is why the technological and the organizational learning each and individual persons or the employees working in a particular company or in a shop may have 
are known about the system and its configuration for making use of these services. And second one under this uh, transforming organization is changing the nature of work. It reduces the number of employees. Say for example, if suppose if it is a, the work is being done with the help of 10 employees, by making use of this modern business methodology, we can reduce it to 2 or 3. So that is why it, re, it changes the nature of work. There is no time limit for using this sort of business methodology. As far as this impact of e-commerce concerned, the third category is uh, redefining the organization. Redefining in the sense means we can by making use of this modern business methodology it introduces the new product capabilities and it can be also used for introducing new services as well as the products also. And it can change the nature of works of the employees. So that is why by making use of this technique it redefines the entire organization or how they are going to compete with the market to deliver the products or to attract the more number of consumers of making use the particular type of products. As far as the framework of e-commerce concern, I just told about the diagram of the permit diagram. When you are going to see the diagram, many people think e-commerce is just having a website, but e-commerce is much more than that. There are dozens of application of e-commerce such as home banking, shopping in online, stocks and stores, finding a job, conducting an auction and collaborating electronically research and development projects. To execute this application, it is not necessary to have supporting information and organizational infrastructure and system. The e-commerce application is being generally used for various types, one is stocks, jobs, online banking, online marketing. As far as this diagram concern, it is a three pillar diagram. The first pillar we can call it as an application level, the second one we can call it as an infrastructure level. In the infrastructure we are seeing the people, the public policy, technical standards and the organizations. The people concern, the people is nothing but the buyer or the seller or the consumers they are going to making use this sort of business methodology. The second public policy which includes the taxes, legal, privacy and the security issues. The technical standard concern, it can be used for documents as well as for security and network protocols. What type of protocol is being used in the system present in manufacturer as well as in customer side. On seeing the organization, it can be in partners, the or it can be used for strengthening relationship between the partners, competitors or we can use the any sort of government services for doing this type of business. On seeing the third level, we can call it as a management level. It is a having five different service infrastructures. First one, we can call it as a common business service infrastructure which can be used for encrypted credit card payment systems or we can call it as a secure smart cards or it can be used for authentication purpose. Second one, messaging and information distribution infrastructure. It can be used with the help of EDI and email for message sending or it can be used for a data uh, sending from one system to another system. The third one, we can call it as a multimedia context and a network publishing infrastructure. It can be used by a particular type of application. Say for example, it can be used for multimedia, animation or it can be used for a certain type of application. The fourth one, network infrastructure, the network may be a telecom or it can be in cable or it can be in wireless. So generally, it is a network infrastructure services. The fifth one, we can call it as interfacing infrastructure. It can be mainly used for database integration. It can be used for customization and the application in which the service is being used. Uh, next we are going to see the classification of e-commerce application. From this we have seen some of the topics that is impact, what are all the various uh, uh, generalized framework of e-commerce. Next we are going to see the classification of electronic commerce application. The application of e-commerce are divided into three categories. First one electronic markets which is mainly used for buying and selling goods and services. Second one, intra-organizational system 
which is mainly used to facilitate inter and intra organizational flow of information and communication. The third one is customer service, we will see one by one in detail. Electronic markets is nothing but by making use of this modern business methodology, the information or the product is being sent or is received between the manufacturer and the customer in what sort of by making use what sort of services, either it may be in common business or it may be a network or it may be an interface service. Second one, intra organizational system, it is having various types, first one we can call it as a EDI technique, electronic data interchange which is mainly used to transfer the data from one system to an another system. Second type, extranets, third one, electronic fund transfers. This is also one of the important technique we are going to see in our electronic payment system. Fourth one, electronic forms. Fifth one, integrated messaging, which is nothing but delivery of email and fax documents through a single electronic transmission system. The fifth one, we can call it as a shared database type. If it is a data is being used both by manufacturer or the wholesaler or the retailer, we are using this type of inter-organizational system. The, the data is being shared between the various uh, intermediate level or brokers. Sixth one, you can call it as a supply chain management. By making use of this supply chain management, we can easily find out that is how much time it takes a product to reach the cus customer. So that is why this is mainly used to reduce the product cycle time as far as the efficiency concern. The next we are going to see what are all the benefits of this electronic commerce? How we are going to making use of this electronic commerce? By making use of this electronic commerce, what are all the benefits to the organization, to the consumers or to the uh, uh, society? So that is why we are going to categorize the benefits into three things. One is called benefits to organization, benefits to customers or consumers and benefits to society. We will see one by one what are all the various advantages to organizations. As far as this benefits to organization concern, it expands the marketplace to national and international markets. That is the market, the product market is being expanded. Second one, it decreases the cost of creating, processing, distributing, storing and retrieving paper based information. Third one, it can be used for developing highly specialized business or it can be able to create a highly specialized business by making use of this technique. Fourth one, it reduces the time between the outlay of capital and receipt of products and services between the manufacturer and the consumers. As far as this benefits to consumer concern, we are having a five important uh, advantages. First one, it enables the customers to shop or do other transactions 24 hours a day. And that is why I have told there is no time limit, anytime, anywhere you are doing this sort of business. So in this way, this is advanced, this is having a more advantage than the traditional way of business. Second one, it provides customers with more choices, that is the customer is having a more choice or to find out whether the product is affordable to their needs or not as far as the quality concern or the price concern. Third one, it allows quick delivery. So that is why it reduces the lower product cycle time and it can be mainly used for the customer's feedback service. The fourth one, it makes it possible to participate in virtual auctions. As far as this e-commerce application concerned, just now we have seen it can be used for stocks, jobs or it can be used for to find out the online marketing or online advertising. So that is why it makes possible to participate in virtual auction. Not only it can be used for buying and selling, it can be used for a multi uh, purpose. The fifth one, it can be mainly used for substantial discounts. If suppose if it is a one manufacturer is having a competition which results in substantial discounts, how they are going to compete in the market. So making a strategy depending upon the response given by the consumers, the company has to take the decision to avoid this sort of competition, where they are going to sell the product, in which particular area or how they are going to re-engineering their products. They are going to decrease the price or increase the price 
or they are going to give any offers to the particular products in order to attract more number of customers. As far as this benefits to society concern, it enables more individuals to work at home and less traveling for shopping. So that is why they have introduced uh, online shopping or online marketing. Second uh, thing concern according to this benefits to society, it allows some merchants to be sold at lower prices, less affluent people can buy more and increase their standards of living. Ultimately, in order to sustain in the market, the merchants or the vendors, they are going to uh, suit this way, they are going to reduce the product's price to attract more number of consumers. Third one, it, it can be mainly used to deliver of public services such as health care, education and the distribution of government services. Not only it can be used for buying and selling or it can be used to find out the stocks or jobs, it can be used for a general thing or it can be used for health care, education, distribution of government service at a reduced cost and improved quality. That is most important according to the benefits to society concern. The next we are going to see what are all the various limitations of electronic commerce. Ultimately, suppose when having an advantage, there is a disadvantage of making use of this modern methodology. So, we are going to see some of the limitations of electronic commerce. In this limitation, we are going to categorize into two things. One is called limitations through technical and limitation through non-technical aspect. First, we will see what are all the various disadvantages or limitation in technical aspect. First, lack of system security, reliability, standards and some common protocols. Generally, when you are going to send the information from manufacturer to customer or from customer to manufacturer, in the customer point of view or in the manufacturer point of view, they are having some sort of hesitation, whether that particular information is being only to known the manufacturer and the customer or it can be seen by any others. So, that is why the information is being in an authenticated way. Reliability. Reliability in the sense means that particular information or it can be an, a payment system after getting the product we are going to pay the amount with the help of credit cards or debit cards we are going to pay the amount. How far it can be reliable or it can be reached to the corresponding manufacturers or the corresponding merchants. So, that is why we are going to making use this authentication scheme to find out he is an authorized person to receive or send the information or to see the information. Then what are the various technical standards we are going to making use in our system or in the manufacturer side. Second one, insufficient telecommunication bandwidth. The media in which we are going to send the information from consumer to manufacturer or from manufacturer to the consumers, this is somewhat uh, a more disadvantage. So, that is why we are going to increase the or increase or decrease the uh, communication bandwidth between the consumer and the manufacturer. So, that is why insufficient telecommunication bandwidth is one of the important limitation. Third one, difficult to integrate the internet and electronic commerce software with some existing application and databases to download or to send the information from the consumer part of view or the manufacturer point of view. It is somewhat difficult to integrate the softwares being present in the two systems. Fourth one, the vendors may need a special web servers and other infrastructures to download or to see the information of making use in this business methodology. So, this is one of the most important uh, disadvantages. They have need a special web servers. Fifth one, the electronic commerce software might not fit with some hardware being present either in the manufacturer side or in the consumer side. The next we are going to see what are all the various non-technical limitations. First, cost and justification is one of the most important disadvantage, non-technical limitation. Cost, cost in the sense means after getting the product, how we are going to send the, send the uh, amount to the particular manufacturers and they have to justify with this sort of transaction. Second one, security and privacy issues. As I already told, how far the information is being known 
to the manufacturers or to the buyers. As far as in the consumer part, the information is being may not be able to find out by any other that is any other third person, any third persons what product they are getting and how much amount they are paying for the particular product. So, these sort of things may be considered in this point of view. The third one lack of trust and user resistance, lack of trust, you have to trust see for example, either in the manufacturer side or in the consumer side, the manufacturer has to trust the consumer as well as the consumer has to trust the manufacturers. By making use of this electronic commerce or the modern business methodology, it transforms the organization or it redefines the organization by making use of these various techniques, one is called EPS. EDI or EFT. That is why this is having a more advantage over a traditional way of business, how we are going to reduce our cost, how the data is being secured or how we are going to making use the privacy issues, only the data is known to the manufacturer and the consumer. So, that is why by making use of this modern business methodology, we can reduce our cost or we are going to reduce our product cycle time and we are going to give a better customer service of doing this sort of business. Thank you.